The Southern Poverty Law Center has long been the think tank hatching the idea of vast right-wing conspiracies. SPLC is the source behind some of the most outrageous enemies lists being compiled by Homeland Security, fusion centers like the MIAC report, and emails and policy statements by the military. SPLC creates the boogeyman, writes the script, and Homeland passes it off to the police who are trained to associate political speech with a threat to their personal safety. And it's not just political speech. Southern Poverty Law Center is attacking religious freedom, calling it hate. This line of attack has been promulgated within the military. The free exercise religion of those in the military is being attacked as not just hateful, but conflated with the racism of the KKK. It's an interesting comparison for the SPLC to make since it got its start in the violent racist confrontations of the 60s. On May 20th, 1961, when a busload of black and white freedom riders arrived in Montgomery, Alabama, they were met with what Time Magazine described as an idiot club-swinging mob of about 100. In this picture, we see SPLC founder Morris Dees' first client. The man on the ground with the camera getting kicked by a Klansman? Uh, that's not Morris Dees' client. This is Dees' client. Dees didn't defend the Freedom Riders who were viciously attacked, bloodied, and had their bus set on fire. Dees defended the KKK thug, the ringleader. And he got him off, in spite of it being widely reported like this article in Life magazine. And Morris Dees got paid a lot of money, $5,000, which at the time was the median family income for a year. But this is what his bio on the SPLC website says. After launching a law practice in Montgomery in 1960, he won a series of groundbreaking civil rights cases. Maybe he should amend that to say that he won for the Klan, a leg-breaking case against civil rights activists. Morris Dees would have us believe that sometime after he got Klansman Claude Henley off, sometime after he cashed the check, that he decided that he would start suing the Klan for cash instead of defending the Klan for cash. Maybe it wasn't a moral epiphany, but a financial epiphany. He could make much more money doing direct mail fundraising to the public than he could suing. Criticisms of the SPLC from the left focus on how little it does other than fundraising, how much money it hoards for its endowment, and how much money it pays multimillionaire Morris Dees. Alexander Cockburn described Dees and the SPLC this way. Ever since 1971, U.S. Postal Service mailbags have bulged with Dees' fundraising letters, scaring dollars out of the pockets of trembling liberals aghast at his lurid depictions of hate-sodden America in dire need of legal confrontation by the SPLC. Cockburn wrote in 2009 how Dees and the SPLC were spinning the election of Barack Obama. What is the arch salesman of hate-mongering, Mr. Morris Dees of the Southern Poverty Law Center, doing now? He's saying that the election of a black president proves his point. Hate is on the rise. Send money. Without skipping a beat, the mail shot moguls who year after year make money selling the notion there's been a right resurgence out there in the hinterland with massed legions of haters have used the election of a black president to say that, yes, hate is on the rise in America, ready to burst apart at the seams, with millions of extremists primed to march down Main Street draped in Klan robes, a copy of Mein Kampf tucked under one arm and a Bible under the other.